Hello, my wonderful friends. Meg is here on a beautiful day. We're reading the perks of being a wallflower. We're in part three. We're almost done with this book. I mean, tomorrow we're going to be pretty much at the end. Uh, this book, oh my gosh, I, I really love it. You know, I, I woke up at 3.30 last night and I haven't had a feeling like this since the picture of Dorian Gray, where I woke up, it's 3.30 and my mind's telling me, hey, do you know what? Let's get up, make some coffee and read some more Perks of Being a Wallflower. I've already read through it once. I, I'm rereading it every time I come on with you guys. I watched the movie last night. I listened to the audio book. I just, I'm just engulfed in it because there's so much in this and not just in Charlie, who I love, but every character, you can kind of learn something from, and it probably speaks to you depending on your age, where you're at in your life, who you are, right? Uh, but I'm learning from all of the characters. And to th this last part uh, that actually made me emotional was the relationship between Charlie and his sister. Oh, it's just so heart touching. Just that kind of a love. I don't have siblings, so I don't know. And it seems different for everyone. You know, as I look at different people's relationships, some people love their siblings, some people hate them, you know, and uh, I, I find that fascinating. This whole book is fascinating, but I did have one concern. And first, it started like this. I thought to myself, I wish I would have read this when I was a kid, because then I think I would have known what was going on in so many different areas, right? And But then I started thinking, I don't know, maybe not. Maybe I wouldn't have understood. Maybe it's maybe because it's, I'm 53 and I'm looking back and I thought, oh, if I would have known that, that, and that, I would have understood and maybe I would have went through my adolescence better. I, I would have understood high school better, but I don't think so because many of you have come and said, Magus, this book is triggering me. I am not enjoying this ride, many of you. And then I think the one who said it the most beautiful, I, I gotta read this to you. One of our wonderful friends just sent this this morning. She said, this book is difficult for me. The movie came out when I was 12 or 13. That's what I was thinking. I was wondering if I read this book when I was a kid like that, 12, 13, right in there, would it have helped me? Apparently not. Listen to this. All of us young kids loved it and got the book too. But it was a mass media exposure to issues like assault, substances, painful relationships, and they ended up marking, marketing that to lots of young people. I think it's probably a good story for adults. That's what I was wondering about. Thank you. But it was a huge milestone in romanticizing depression, depression, drama in young people. Like we all acted differently after that movie came out. It started off the genere of TV and movies about trauma being marketed towards tweens. Oh, we wanted to be like them and have these problems. I could so see that. I know how, when I was that age, how much I was influenced by movies and music and books, right? And I try to m mimic myself after them. And this, yeah, this would probably be a, a bad thing to mimic yourself after. Uh, we wanted to be like them and have these problems. And I think advertisers knew this. I doubt the author had this intention. Yeah, I agree with you. But I am certain it was part of a negative spiritual force against the youth. Well, if I had a daughter, I wouldn't let her read it until she was grown up, LOL. And that's what I was wondering about. And you answered my question. And I, when I answered back, I said, it's like she was reading my mind. All these things I was wondering about, she answered because she was there. She got to experience it at 12 or 13. And she answered all my questions. Thank you. Thank you for reading my mind. I love how close we all are here. Uh, let's see. I wouldn't let her, she wouldn't let her own daughter read till she's grown up, LOL. 
on its own. However, it is a very compelling story and draws you in. It really does. Oh, man. And then so many of you in the comments have, have just been saying the things that triggered you about it. Oh, man. And, and you know what? Well, we'll get more into that because at the very end of it, I had just this epiphany and I'm excited to share with you. Okay, let's see. Where was I? Let's see. So part three. Uh, so Charlie uh, makes the mistake of doing drugs. And, and like if you are really having uh, psychotic episodes and dealing with schizophrenia and seeing things that aren't there and re realities are blur, drugs are not for you. Like Charlie is not a, a kid that uh, is just trying to act like that. Like he didn't read a book like this or watch the movie, thought those kids were cool. And so he couldn't wait to uh, hang out in a basement and smoke weed, you know, and stuff. And uh, it wasn't romanticized to him. And so he's acting out a role, right? And for those of you, maybe if there's younger people watching this, it's not romantic. Like uh, they try to make it seem, uh, matter of fact, one person said that the smoking pot to them was just like paranoia, right? It, it's not always, you know, uh, anyway, don't be fooled. And I was lucky. Uh, my dad, you know, he saw me watching these movies where they do, they romanticize alcoholism and drugs. And uh, he took me downtown LA and he showed me introduced me to drug people. <laughs> he uh, actually took me into a bar uh, that his dad used to hang out at and introduced me to alcoholics. And when we left, he said, so is that a little different than the movies you've been watching when you see it in real life? Right? When people, your friends are, you want to party, dude? And they think it's fun and cool. And it, But you see what it really looks like. You know, it's uh, it's a big difference. Don't Don't fall for... Their marketing. It's a big like drugs and alcohol. Uh, they're not cool. They're not, they're not spiritual enlightenment. It's a, uh, it's a nightmare. Oh my, 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 my. So he does drugs and now he's tripping worse. And uh, luckily he has Sam to walk her through it. And so Sam explains to him to focus, right? Uh, so she said, you, you saw what it looked like on the drugs, how the streets were waves and, you know, everything the way it was. She said, OK, so you see that you realize that now I need you to focus. And she says, like, look at the ground, the concrete. Is that solid now? Yeah, it's not moving. Right. Right. So she's grounding him. She does a horrible way of breath work. Right. In meditation and stuff, you do breath work and you're focusing on the air filling your lungs, you're feeling the cool air come down your throat, you're noticing your chest expand, right? You're grounding yourself, you breathe out, and it's very relaxing. She's doing it with cigarettes, right? You can do it without putting toxins <laughs> into your body. Uh, but she's trying, you know, she's a teenager trying to help teenagers. And uh, she, she actually did a pretty good job because she got him to focus, on, uh, on substance, on, on real, not to lose himself in, in, in the illusion, you know. And uh, so, and then this relationship he has with Mary Elizabeth. Oh my gosh, I, I felt all the emotions. <laughs> He's feeling, and that's the thing about this book. It really does draw you into every character where, you know, you, you're feeling all they feel, and this author does a great job of describing this relationship with Mary Elizabeth, where you're there, right? You're experiencing it. Of course, you're pulling on your own memories if you're my age, but also this is just good writing. Uh, I love how pretentious she is. And, and so she wants to take him to a, you know, a European movie, you know, and it's in a foreign language and has subtitles, which he likes because he's a reader. He said, I'd never read a movie before, and the movie itself was very interesting, but I don't think it was very good. I didn't really feel different when it was over. 
I like that. I like it when you read a book or you watch a movie or you listen to music that changes you and hopefully for the better, right? But that's something, you experience something where so many books you read and you forgot about them. It's entertaining, I guess, but I don't think it was good because it didn't change me. I don't feel different afterwards. Mary Elizabeth, uh, she kept saying it was an articulate film, so articulate. And I guess it was. The thing is, I didn't know what it said, even if it said it very well. Oh, genius. Hilarious. <laughs> uh, okay, so I want to get to the end. I want to wrap this up. Because this is everything. I don't know why I took my glasses off. Stay with me. You guys really concentrate with me. This is important. This is everything. I had OCD. It's horrible. You get stuck in those loops. And so here is Charlie. It's almost like, almost like a prayer. He says, I wish God or my parents or Sam, or my sister, or someone, or anyone would just tell me what's wrong with me and just tell me how to be different, how to fix it, how to explain it to me in a way that makes sense. That's everything. That's the fucking problem. No one can explain it to you in a way that makes sense. Maybe because they never been through it before. Maybe because they never took the time to have a nervous breakdown because they keep their minds so busy on other stuff. I don't know. Maybe the doctors can't help because all they know to do is repeat what was written in a book and it doesn't help. My God, most of the people that come to me for help, it's after they've been to the doctors, after they've taken all the medication and nothing's helped. And then they come to me and I've had many people that I've been able to help. Not because I'm so great, I joke around a lot. But it's not me, it, it, it's that message of Asha. It's what saved me. It's the only thing that made sense. I, I begged to a God, a deity that never showed up. I asked my parents and they made it worse. They didn't mean to, right? But they just kept feeding the lie that they were fed to me. Which was that thing that was killing me. God bless them. You know, your parents, they want the best for you. It breaks their heart. They never want to think they're hurting you. They're trying to give you the thing that they were given to try to help you. But it, it wasn't helping. To friends, to books, to pastors. Where do you go? Thank God Asha came along. And it made sense. I circled makes sense. Reason. The message of the Magi is reason. That's why I'm kind of excited about AI. I understand the pitfalls and the dangers, obviously, but AI is all about reason. God, I love reason. <laughs> I wanted to make this all go away. And so here, just this paragraph, I'm, I'm, I was invested in Charlie here. I remember wanting it all to go away. I told you about my thinking pillow. I would lay under for hours trying to snap out of that. Had no one to help me. And when people tried to help, they made it worse. And that's what I have so many people tell me that deal with OCD and post-traumatic stress syndrome. Some of the things they're doing now, like especially with post-traumatic stress where they're having you just keep reliving it in your mind, you're focusing on the wrong thing, right? Even Sam had better sense than that. Focus on, you know, don't focus on the nightmare. You saw what that looks like. Now focus on substance. Focus on something, you know, for this, something good. Don't keep focusing on that hell. They think it'll make you desensitized to it, doesn't it? How do they not know this, guys? People spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to get a degree to hang on their wall and they can't help. Not only can't they help, they make it worse. 
<sighs> he says, I know it's my responsibility. He knows it's going to be up to him to make it better. No one's going to be able to help him. Which is, yes, but there is, you, if you found the right person, they could help you. Kind of like Sam did with him earlier. But the problem is uh, that this is a worse that feels too big. Right? So it, he, he's saying, I know things get worse before they get better. That's what my psychiatrist says. But this worse, it feels too big. And after not talking to anyone, right, he's kind of cut off right now. That's the last thing I think you probably want to be. He's stuck in his head, running those loops. Doesn't have it. He needs a Sam. He doesn't need a God, a pastor, a parent, a psychiatrist. He needs a friend that's been through it. That's willing to open up and share that has gotten through it. Like Sam had gotten through a bad LSD trip, could walk him through it. I think that's what I'm good about with walking people through OCD and depression, post-traumatic stress, because I, I got to the other end. Uh, he finally calls Bob. Bob is the drug dealer. And it kind of made me think, uh, with the drugs for these different things, I mean, everybody's got something now. And they got a drug for everything. And it's pathetic how they've marketed this. They've created it. And now they're going to treat it and make billions of dollars off of it. But I have seen, I have to tell you this, I have seen drugs work for some people. Matter of fact, even people that I counseled that I, I wasn't getting anywhere with. I did the meditations and the breathing and the positive thinking. And I wasn't getting anywhere. And they went and they got the medication and they slowly got better. I, I know other people that the medication made it worse for them. So it's an individual thing, isn't it? I said that awfully aggressive, isn't it? Because <laughs> I, I was thinking about that person I couldn't help myself and the drugs help. It's a slap to my face, you know, but I'm glad they got the help. That's all that matters, to feel better, feel good in the end and, and be able to get to a point where you can enjoy this life that is a gift. You know, last night, did you see my little short I put out last night? The Northern Lights, the Aurora Borealis. I stood out there for about 45 minutes. It was spiritual. and <laughs> It was so beautiful. This morning, again, I walk out, taking the dog's potty, and the birds are singing, and all the leaves are, and buds are on the trees, and the flowers are coming up. I can smell them, and that warm breeze, and just, oh, life is so freaking beautiful and if there's someone right now that's in a dark place because I've been there I've been with a thinking pillow I've been in OCD loops I, I've been where you think there's no hope there is hope and one day my god you will have a day like this I'm 53 and I cannot believe the world I live in I, I dreamed about this when I was in San Bernardino California being one day up in the Pacific Northwest, I got a lake and I got forest and I got waterfalls and I got deer that sleep in my yard that are my friends. I got it all fenced off. I got about, I don't know, I've never measured it, but maybe one, well, probably about two acres fenced off all the way around my house. It's just my safe place. I got my library and my kitchen and my dogs and life's good. It's a gift. It's beautiful. What a trip this book has been. Where I'm at in my life, I'm loving it so much. And and, and I'm, the majority of you are saying, Magus, I'm not at that place. This book is triggering me. I get it. But better days coming. Sunny days, right? All right, guys. We got a big part was that part four? My God, that's a lot of pages. Oh, holy moly. And then we just got a smidgen. There's like, was that an epilogue? And uh, afterward is just a tiny bit for, for the next couple of days after that. So we're about three days when we're going to wrap this up. And I'll, I'll tell you what I might want to do. Let me see what you think. 
for our next book, especially after reading this. Maybe we should do Asha. Maybe we should do my book. Maybe we should do a book that is just healing, right? A lot of these books, the healing comes, but you go through the ride with them, right? You go through the dark to come out into the light. The beautiful thing about Asha, it's just light, 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 light. It's good. Let me know what you think about that. If you're still here, tell me, do me a favor. We're 20 minutes in. If you are here, go to the comments and tell me, Magus, I'm still here. At 20 minutes, I'm still here. I love to hear from those of you. You're my, you're my friends. You're my family. You're what this, this channel is all about. I love, love, love you.